Add me. How about we add me and see if that works? All right. We in the house. What's up, people? How you doing? What's going on? Give it up for my people in the house. Are we live? Are we live? Looks like we're live. That looks pretty good. We're doing pretty well. What's up, people? My name is Tim Black. Our readings, our readings successful. Do we got readings? We got readings. We're doing it. We're doing it. What's up, people? How you doing? Welcome back to the show. Welcome back. Welcome back. Does this thing, does this work? I put that there and I don't see it. Okay. I've still got bells and whistles, guys. I don't know how to use on stream, y'all. But I'll get there. <laughs> As long as you guys can see and hear me. What's up, people? My name is Tim Black. Welcome to Calling It Out with Tim Black. Um, Yeah, later is going to have to be fine. Thank you, Mrs. Black. So, <laughs> are we in the house? What's up? I got some people in the house with me. I got some people in the house. What's up, people? What's going on? Now, there goes my comments. Let's just do a sh make sure you can like and share. Let's do that. Let's do that. Lucius Tatum. Lucius Tatum up in the house. What's up, Lucius? What's cracking? And let's go over here. We can check out these comments. Katrina Watson's in the house. Wolfpack Love. Wolfpack Facts. Wolfpack Cornbread. All, all that good stuff, man. What's going on, Katrina? My brother's in the house. Give it up for Buck. <coughs> Where my damn water at? What's up, Buck? Welcome back to the show, Buck. Glad to have you. Buck, we're going to do this. Wednesdays and Fridays, Buck. What's up, Tobias? What's up? What's going on, Wolfpack Love? What is going on? Good to see you, TB. What's going on? What's up? I got my man Damon in the house. What's up, Damon? Positive vibes. FBA, B1 family. Yep. Mike Hughes. Them folks messing with the like button. Give it up. What's up, Mike? How you doing? Thanks for tuning in, fam. D up in the house. Give it up for D. Give it up for D. Give it up for Jay, Jay the informant in the house. What's up, Jay? How you doing, fam? My people. Tony D. Welcome back, Tony D. Good to have you as well. I gotta give me some water. This ain't gonna work out, fam. This, 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 this is bad, y'all. I gotta do it. <coughs> I got a bottle over here. Yeah, dude. Not bad, y'all. You know, you know how it is. You know, brother got a. You gotta bring his water, his water out. That's what's up. That's what's going on. So we good, we good, we good for the show tonight. We good to go. My people in the house, please share this out. Could y'all share this out? I don't want people to know we in the house, you know, because it's it's Wednesday. The show's news back. Wednesdays and Fridays. I'm saying nine o'clock. Dr. West had a live stream at eight. I was gonna go at eight. But I said, you know what? Maybe nine is better. Plus, that way I can let Dr. West do his thing. I can do my thing. What is going on, y'all? What is happening? What is happening? What is happening? What is happening? We are in the, we are live on YouTube. That's the only place I put us tonight is on YouTube, y'all. We got some stories. We got some great content to cover tonight, man. It's going to be, I think you're going to like this. You're going you're gonna to get into it, man. You're going to be feeling this one. You know, I, I'm still like, since this is new, I got to go check. I got to go double check. Make sure everything is okay. You know what I'm saying? So let's go here. Tim Black, are we live? We up live. I see my people there. And we are there. Okay, let me just edit. Make sure we are. All systems are go up here. Let's see what the default settings are here real quick. See, I knew I should have known they were going to do me like this, man. They, I tell you, man, they just... Why they why they gotta do me like why they gotta do me like this? Why they gotta do me like this? Okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. I see. I see. We going. I'm gonna have to be double checking on stream yard. 
Like I had to double check on OBS. But we are live and you hear me on this mic. Damn, man, I need I need my system. Are we loud enough? I need I could turn this up. I don't want to turn this up too much, but I could turn this up, man. So, you know, we we got we got my people in the house. That's what matters. We all good. Thank you, Danny Ferguson. Perfect time. That's what's up, South Carolina. Oh, you missed his live stream? It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Um, Dr. West will be on my show tomorrow. So get up for Dr. West coming through tomorrow. We got him scheduled. We have him scheduled, y'all. You guys, um, this is this is dope, but I got announcements for you. Okay. Um, I'm gonna start off with Dr. West. How about that? How about we get we get right into it? How about we start with Dr. West? Because this is a Dr. West crowd. This is a Dr. West channel. And and uh we might as well start there. We good to go? I guess I did. I put this on Twitter. Did I put it on Twitter? Yeah, we on Twitter. No, that's an old joint. I did not put this on Twitter. Let's see. My bad, guys. I mean, let me at least share it out for Twitter. You know, because that's that's the least I could do since I'm not going live stream on Twitter tonight. Put it out there, just in case. Okay, so guys, check this out. Dr. Cornell West made an announcement today. I'm going to update you to that announcement. And you know what? Let's get there. Let's go ahead and do that because that way I can do less talk and I can do more showing. Hey, blessed is my great joy to announce my dear sister. She was a great one of the great freedom fighters of a generation, one of the great love warriors of a generation. She's a doctor, she's a professor. Most importantly, she's a lover of the people. Her name is Malena Abdullah. Mm -hmm. Sister Malena Abdullah. All right. <laughs> That's so, who we are talking about. We are talking about the man. She will, she will join us here a little bit later in just a few minutes, in fact. Um, let me let me ask you, uh, I know Melina. Many of us know Melina. If you are in L.A. or in California, if you're connected to Black Lives Matter across the country, if you read the national press, you've heard the name, uh, uh, Dr. Melina Abdullah. Um, so we know her well, and now we know that Dr. West's running mate uh, in this presidential election season and cycle is Dr. Melina Abdullah. So tell me more about why you chose Dr. Abdullah, Dr. West. Well, my brother, you know, this campaign is, is very much a movement. In the, it's a moment in the movement of a great people, though, man. And I wanted somebody whose heart, mind, and soul is committed to the empowerment of poor and working peoples of all colors, even though we always begin on the chocolate side of town, as you know. Mm -hmm. And Melina has a history of longevity, of putting her heart, mind, soul, and body in the struggle. You know, she's been to jail many times. She's hit the road many times. She's been chairman of the Department of Pan-African Studies uh, uh, at California State LA many times. Uh, she has a record of deep commitment and investment in ensuring that poor and working people are at the center of her vision. Another way of putting it, my brother, is that I wanted to, to run with someone who would put a smile on the face of Fannie Lou Hamer and Martin Luther King Jr. from the grave. Mm -hmm. Put a smile on their faces from the grave. Now that's the highest standard, as you know. Mm -hmm. That's not a typical standard of the garden variety politicians. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So now my, my volume should be back in the stream yard's nice. So, as you can see, Dr. West appeared on the Honorable Tavis Smiley show. That's what's up. And he had an opportunity to talk about his new VP. She also appeared. Her name is Dr. Melina Abdullah. Dr. Mayo. And um, I'd seen and heard about her before. I've seen her before. It didn't connect until I said that name. I, I was like, I know that name. So I looked it up and I checked it. Okay, okay. So then I spent the better part of the day checking out 
Dr. Abdullah and getting way acquainted with her because I saw her. Her name was really ringing out a couple of years ago. Um, and she's been doing a lot of stuff. If you start looking her up, if you look her up, you'll get a whole bunch of hits. You'll you'll see a lot of documents, a lot of uh, speeches, a lot of appearances, a lot of activity in, in the credentials of the professor of the Dr. Melina Abdullah. So he went on to have a smiley in Dr. West. He did that. So what I have for you now, I want to I wanna play a clip. And there's so many of those, so many clips I could have chose from. But I just picked one clip of the Dr. Abdullah, Miss, uh, Miss Abdullah, talking about some things that motivate her and why she's an activist. Okay, so let's jump to that real quick. Let's see. A lot of our readers are not black. And when you said um, being unapologetically black, I understood what you meant. But I think that there are people who will not understand what that means. Can you expand upon that? To what does it mean to be unapologetically black? So to be unapologetically black means to, I mean, what it sounds like, right? To be black out loud, black on purpose, right? Um, to not have to make other people feel comfortable with our blackness, right? That, you know, if you're not comfortable, you gotta get comfortable, right? But it's not my job to stroke you into comfort. Um, there was a time if people just remember 10 years ago where we had to, we were um, told that we had to be quiet about blackness, that every time we said black, we had to couple it with black and brown or hide it under a people of color umbrella. To, we were um, told that we had to be quiet about blackness, that every time we said black, we had to couple it with black and brown or hide it under a people of color umbrella, right? Um, where we had to say, are you okay with this? Or um, let you touch my hair, right? Um, I think that unapologetic blackness is about saying that I will absolutely dance loudly to um, rap music and jazz and blues, right? That um, that being black is something that I am entitled to. That your um, white privilege is not is not something you're entitled to, right? And I think that um, the world becomes better when we are unapologetic about who we are and challenge the world to catch up with that. Yes, yes. Wow. 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 I look, I'm not gonna do a lot of claps, but. We gotta clap for that. We gotta clap for that, Dr. Abdullah. I'm going to tell you something, guys. Um, folks, I'm, I got to tell you, Johnson, I have to tell you. And I, I used to call everybody Johnson. That was the thing. It was a thing. I I created it like four or five years ago, calling everybody Johnson. And then, uh, then the show started. They made a show called The Johnsons. So I stopped doing it because I was pissed. Because I had been doing that for years. And then four years in, a show popped up with the same premise. But I like the idea of just calling everybody Johnson because that makes us all connected. And I can feel like I'm talking to just one person, one Johnson. So that's what I'm going to say, Johnson. Because we're all in this together. We're all Johnsons. We're Johnsons. My community, Johnsons. Um, so Johnson, when I was, when I was, Looking up, when I found out who Dr. West had chosen as his vice presidential running mate, his VP, and I saw that it was Dr. Abdullah, and I was like, oh, man. I was disappointed. I was disappointed at first. Let me explain why I was disappointed, because I said, damn. Dr. West ain't going to be able to win. Because he got a black woman, man. That's it's gonna be hard, man. It's gonna be hard, man. 
It's going to be hard for Dr. West to win now. He got a sister, man. It's two black people. America don't want a real black brother, let alone a real black sister. I said, damn. Anybody else feel this way? Anybody else for a moment feel this way? Be honest. Be honest. We all born into the same system of white supremacy. Let's be truthful. It's okay. That's the first thing I thought, man. Then I started thinking about what Jimmy Dore said. And what, what uh, what's the guy, what's the, Bloomberg, Bloom, not Bloomberg. What's the guy that's real friendly, a lot of people like him? It was it was a guy from the, the gray zone. You guys know what I'm talking about? I was thinking about what Jimmy Dore said with um Blumenthal. Blumenthal, that's his name. Blumenthal. I was thinking about what Blumenthal was saying. I was thinking about what all those all those people that were friends. Max Blumenthal, Black Max Blumenthal, all of them were saying that Dr. West wasn't a serious candidate. And then I saw all of the white left. Well, the majority of white left, online white left in that certain space. Because they ain't no all of nothing, right? Remember them all saying that Dr. West was not a serious candidate because he was talking about what? Black issues. Black issues. I said, damn. Damn. I had to sit with this all day, right? So Mrs. Black was like, they reached out to him and, and Dr. West wants to come on the show. Mrs. Dr. West reached out to my wife and was like, hey, you know, you want to come and see Tim Black? Want to come see Tim Black? Let us know. Tim, you know, Tim Black, that's our guy. We got to come see him. Make this announcement. We're going on Tavis, but we'll, we'll come on your show soon. Let's just do it. And I was like, hold up. Don't tell her just yet because I got to do my background. I got to make sure I, I know what to say. And, and I was, I had trepid folks. I was going through it today because I was like, can I still can I still support Dr. West? Am I how do I feel about this? And I sat with it. And I started doing my research about Dr. Abdullah. Now, I, like once again, that was when I first saw it was a sister, when I first saw a connection to Black Lives Matter. I said, damn, Black Lives Matter? Not Black Lives Matter, man. Oh my God, all the incoming, all the drama. All the anger, all the frustration. And that's from black folks. I'm not even talking about the white folks, as we already know. I already told you, but the Jimmy Dores were already saying when he said, when they found out Dr. West is going to bring up issues about black people. They said, I can't be taken serious. So we're not talking about them because we know how they already felt. But I was talking about the black folks who have a bit of taste in their mouth about Black Lives Matter, the organization. Right? The brand of Black Lives Matter. And that she was a founding member of that. I said, damn. Then I listened to her talk. I listened to Dr. Abdullah talk. I listened to what she was about. And I said, damn it, man. I felt badly. I felt a tinge of shame for even second guessing Dr. West on this. Because let me tell you something, y'all. This is the first time a black woman has been, there has been a black, a black, two blacks on the top of a ticket. This is the first time two black people on the top of a ticket. A black man and a black woman, black man, president, black, black female, black American, black, born black, in America, black. FBA black, B1 black, black American, and another black American, born in America black. She's a Pan-Africanist professor, a professor of Pan-Africanism. I said, damn it. I got to check myself all the way up. I said, damn, now I'm feeling bad, right? I'm like, damn. Then I'm seeing all the work she put in. All the work she put in, arrested several times, protested. This is not that BS where the camera's at. 
where the cameras at so I could get on TV shit. This is real. We're talking about those people that are real activists. Them people that really put that work in. Those people that really show up. Those people that really put their lives on the line. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those type of people. That's the type of person Dr. Abdullah is. I said, well, you know what? That's okay, Tim. Don't feel bad. You were wrong. You, 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 for a second, you were wrong. It's okay, though, Dr. You know, it's okay, Tim, because look, look, use it and be authentic with it. Because there are going to be some of your viewers that feel the same way. Then explain to them why you feel optimistic about this, why this is important, and why the support is even more valuable. I said, God damn it. Dr. West and Dr. Abdul are talking the same language. The ideology is aligned. He could have went. I, I said, it's going to be people saying, he should have got Tulsi Gabbard. He could have went and got Kim Iverson. It's going to be some Negroes. It's going to be some niggas. It's going to say he could have went and got, got Candace Owens. You know, the ones that were supporting her two seconds ago until the shit hit the fan and all of a sudden they stopped talking. At first they were positive about it. Till we start speaking up and now they don't, now they like putting out content. Oh, no, no Candace, no Candace. What I'm trying to say is there are going to be people from different vantage points. This is going to make it hard for people to hide the truth of who they are and what they're about. Folks. This is a magnificent ticket with two unapologetically black people who support all people, who are both committed to the same cause, revolution, ending these structures that keep us broke, subjected to oppression, to bullshit ass, corporate, capitalistic, Monarchs, ruling class, one percenters ruling over us, police brutality, mass incarceration, climate discrimination, the environmental injustice, criminal injustice, medical injustice, health injustice, everything, just name it. You, we have an opportunity to support two candidates who support our values. And support our values. <laughs> there ain't nobody a saint. No one's a saint. But I couldn't think of two better people to say, if I'm going to go down with a ship, I'm going down on this one. It's going to be really hard for people to hide. See, I, I want to make it uncomfortable for the people to sit on the couch this time. I want to make it uncomfortable for them. You ain't got to vote Democrat. Please don't vote Democrat. Vote Independent. Vote Dr. West. See, I think there's some dirty money out there floating around. Folks, I think there's some dirty money floating around that's telling people not to engage politically. What would be their reason for not supporting the first black, all-black ticket? At a time when we're running, Dr. <laughs> we're running Dr. Cordell West, Dr. Abdullah, Dr. Mel, uh, Melina Abdullah, how could you say no to that? How are you going to say, oh, I just want to know, what's going to be the rationale to say no? See, I want to flush out the dirty money people. I want to flush out the dirty money people. I want to flush out the people that are insincere. I want to flush out the people that, because see, you can feed whether intentionally or unintentionally, you can feed on, on despair. You can, you can eat off people by chewing at their despair and their frustration without offering any solutions. And what this ticket does by having Dr. West and Dr. Abdullah not be Democrats, not be Republicans, be independents, that takes that whole thing away where we say, we got to keep our vote because we can't, we can't reward these bad these bad policies and these bad, these bad parties. Well, here we go. Here we go. I give you two. 
I give you an unprecedented ticket of two FBAs, two black women and men, a black man and a black woman, two doctors committed to upliftment. Committed to ending this shit system that we have. Let's start here. Nothing's perfect, but let's start here. I want to hear somebody make the case for why we can't start here. Why not start here? And we got so many black folks that are so tired of Joe Biden. Let's start here. We got so many people that are looking at Trump saying Trump is a white supremacist, a racist, an evil man, horrible, whatever, whatever. Fine, fine, fine. Let's start here. I want to know what's your rationale. Say I'm totally wrong. You ain't taking money. No one's paid you to have this opinion that you have. You're not hoping to get some payoff from viewership or whatever. You're not, you know, maybe no one's paying you. Maybe it's just the advertising revenue. Maybe just make money off the coming from the narrative that there's nothing we could do. And we so therefore we should do nothing until everything is perfect for us. And then and then we do it. Or maybe you could just prove me wrong and shut me up and shut us all up. See, I want my people to be so aware of what's happening that any covert activities won't be able to stand, stand the truth, man. Let's let the truth come out. And all I'm saying is, when you got two candidates, you got a ticket like this, I think you got to pull the trigger and support it. I mean, you let's face it, you're not going to get this in the Democratic Party. Haven't they shown you They've never given you this. Therefore, they will never give you this. You're not going to get this in the Republican Party. Come on, guys. You're not going to get this in the Republican Party. We're giving it to you. It's brought to you by a new party, the Justice for All Party. Brand new party. What's stopping us? What is stopping us? You want to send a message to the Democrats? Send a message. You want to send a message to Trump? Send a message. Why is it that the only way to send a message is you can't let, you got to you gotta sit home? I don't understand. Why come you can't send a message by supporting a third party? You would send a message that way. Why can't you do that? Why we can't build a strong third party? that will pay us dividends, not just this election. See, if you just sit home, that gives you help this one election. But if you vote for a third party and we get the numbers up to vote third party, that's going to pay dividends in 2024, but also 2028, in 2032. Get where I'm going? We got to think forward. We got to think beyond 2024. We beyond sending messages to the Democrats. It ain't just about them. It's about the Democrats and the Republicans. It's about this whole country. So, as you can see, my, my opinion has changed. I did my research. Dr. Mel, I'm sorry, I haven't met her yet. I don't, I don't think I should shorten her name. Dr. Melvina Abdullah is a real deal. She a real, she real, real, real deal. But see, Tim Black. Typically, what happens with vice presidents? Typically, vice presidents are their strength in the ticket. And if someone is this way or that way, then this is so they can add sauce to the ticket and they kind of, you know, come in and they, you know, we don't, we don't want, we don't want. What's typically done has not worked for us. So we gotta do something different because we gotta, we gotta do something radically different. Because what's been typically done has screwed us over 45 times. All I'm saying, <laughs> we got to do something different. How about white folks join with black folks, black folks, Latino folks join with us, Asians join with us, Native Americans join with us, all people join us, join together, and let's, let's go for something totally different than what they're offering us. And I ain't got no no diss to no diss to Jill Jill Stein. It's different though. I didn't see this one coming either, Jill. Maybe you should get behind Dr. West and stop talking about, you know, you don't have experience. 
This was an excellent choice. I'm sure Jamal Baraka gonna get behind this, right? Because this makes sense, right? Because we 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 don't have time for division. This makes sense, man. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the prospects. I'm excited by what this represents, and not just represents, but what it actually is. It's an amazing ticket. So like I said, tomorrow, um, Dr. West, tomorrow Dr. West will be on the show. I think Dr. Abdullah will be here as well. Um, and we'll get to know our vice president. Yeah, we'll get to know our vice president. That's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. Now I'm excited about it, man. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Let's... uh. Let's keep it moving. We got any comments on it before we keep it moving? Let me see if we got any comments on the topic, man. What we got? Anybody, anybody? Uh... Yeah. James said hit the like button, y'all. Somebody says, VP, that's what's up. That's what's up, VP, that's what's up. Alias Don Waters Watson. What's up, Alias? What's up, fam? Katrina's with it. Gave me the fire heart. That's what's up. Lynn. Hey, Lynn. Good to see you as always, Lynn. Let's get it on. Mark Bloodface says, I registered for the first time in 50 years. Give it up for Mark, y'all. Get up for Mark. James says, top of the two parties. See what I'm saying? That's how I felt, man. That's James, that's how I felt, brother. And I said, wow. So we don't we don't run from any any fears people have, we address it. And tomorrow, when that Dr. West comes on the show, we're gonna address everything up front. We're going to talk plainly, honestly, flatly, and we're going to get it, we're going to get it in, okay? All right? That's my, that's my commitment to you. I have a commitment to you guys, Johnsons. All my Johnsons, I got a commitment to you. We have a real conversation that you don't need a dictionary to understand. Because, you know, Dr. West is, you know, his brother got so many degrees, you know, intellectual powerhouse. We're going to have a conversation that anybody can get, anybody can understand. It's going to be built for layman's like me because I'm a layman, okay? <laughs> I'm a very simple brother, all right? Got great common sense. So I think I'm, I got good common sense now. But we're going to keep it real simple. It's going to be plain for everybody, all right? Be here tomorrow, guys. We're going to put the time out. We're looking at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but we're working on it. We'll see. We'll double back. I'll let you know for sure. All right, now I got something new that I'm doing. Uh, I got a new award. We're gonna move it. We're gonna move the show on. I got an award I'm giving out, guys. It's called Just Sit Down Award. Just sit down. Sit down award. That's what it is. It's the sit, sit your ass down award. I want to give it out. I want to start. I got I got two recipients of the Just Sit Down Award. My first recipient for the Just Sit Down Award goes to this brother here, Brother Billy D, y'all. Brother Billy D. Williams. He inspired this award. Brother B. D. Billy D. Williams was on the Bill Maher podcast show. And they were having a conversation about a lot of stuff, sweeping conversation that he was having with Bill Maher about a lot of things about Hollywood and about Billy D being so fine. Bill kept talking about that. I was like, damn, okay, Bill, we get it. You think he's attractive? Okay, okay. They go back to the Playboy Mansion days with Hugh Hefner. Both of them. So I, I don't know exactly what Billy D had going on, but apparently more than just a Code 45. You understand what I'm saying? That Code 45 maybe had some 
had a little, it was a boiler maker. Maybe it had a little alcohol in that Code 45. It was something beyond a more liquor, like some extra kick to that Code 45. Because they were having a really a deep conversation. And during that conversation, Bill Maher, I guess Bill Maher brought it up about some acting roles. Blackface. For some reason, blackface came up. I want people to understand, because I got a lot of people that watch the show, different people from different times. Blackface was a negative, degrading manner of which depicting black people. They used burnt cork and they painted their faces. And then they went out on stage and acted ignorant as hell. You think that Netflix show coming out from the good times is trifling. You should see the characters that people played when they had blackface on their face. I'm I'm just as lazy, master. Where the chicken at? What's a watermelon? Eyes bugging, lips all purse. It was degrading on purpose. Over, over, over the top. Degrading that and sexualizing black women and degrading black men Shiftless, lazy, and stupid, and simple. With the depictions for for the amusement of black of white people, for the amusement of white people. This was not anything other than that. That's what blackface was. So somehow the conversation went to this, and here goes the way Billy D. Williams, the iconic Billy D. Williams responded to Bill Maher breaking up blackface. Today, I mean, they would never let you do that. Why? Blackface? Are Why you, not? Because- You should do it. That's maybe, that's your point of view. You should, that, that, if you're that, an actor, you should do anything you want to do. I. That's a great point of view, but the theater would be bombed. Oh, I mean, Muni and I used to talk about this all the time. Muni was the one who was the first person that I worked with in those years who said to me, "If whatever, as an actor, you should be able to do whatever you think you can do, you should be able to do it. But again, not to bring up your sore point, but you actually lived in a period where you couldn't do that where you couldn't but that play the part matter. you should have played. But it didn't matter. I'm, the point is... And that's a great attitude, but it still did happen. Of course it happened. Okay. Right? But, but the fact is that you discuss it. Anybody right. can talk about it means that it wasn't happening. But, I mean, but and the Paul point Muni is comes from an era... You don't go through life feeling like I'm a victim. Correct. I couldn't agree with that more. I, I, I'm just... I mean, I refuse to go through life no. saying to the world... I'm pissed off. I'm not going to be pissed off 24 hours a day. And you shouldn't because of all that pussy you got. Okay. All right. All right. All right. And for in and out the show, it seemed like Bill was fixated on that, that ability of Bill, Billy D. Williams being a sex symbol in the uh, 70s, 80s, 90s. I don't know. Here's the thing, guys. Billy D. Williams can need to sit his ass down. Billy D. needs to sit his ass all the way down, folks. Given cover for the exploitation of black people under the guise that this shows that we're not bothered. We're unbothered. It's some corny shit. Nobody else does this. See, Billy D. Williams thinks he's some type of trailblazer because he has transcended the stereotypes and all the degradation that was hoisted upon black people. As if that makes us, you know, somehow, like somehow we're immune from it. Like it had no impact. These things that were done to black people were done intentionally. They were done to keep black people down. And I guess his way of fighting back may work for him, which was to say, hey, I'm just going to laugh at this shit. I'm going to laugh at this shit. I'm just, none of this affects me. I'm bigger than this. I'm bigger than this body. I'm bigger than the skin. I'm bigger than this country. I'm bigger than what you, what you, I understand what he's trying to say. 
because I watched trying to get to this point because I didn't want to grab the clips that were out there on on Twitter. I wanted to force myself to actually do the research, which is sit through the show. So I don't want to call Billy D. Williams a coon because that's that. That's easy. You just watch the little short clip and call him a coon. It's deeper than that. He actually thinks he's transcending something. He's from, he's from that school. He's 87 years old. And he feels that we should not let anything have any power over us. We determine what's important to us. And this shit's a joke. This life, we cannot, you can't go through life that way. And I respect him having that position. And he's entitled to that position. And if you're 87 years old and you want to feel like you don't care if somebody call you the N-word, or if you don't care, we just, you know, we, you don't care if someone wears blackface and degrades black people on the stage, you don't care about those implications, implications, fine. You don't get to speak for everybody else, bro. That's all I'm saying. It would have been nice if he would have said, he would have threw that in, and then I wouldn't have had no beef with it because we are allowed to be individuals. We're allowed to be individuals and have our own perspective. I got no problems with that. But when it sounds like you're speaking for other people, and when you go on the Bill Maher show, and you say it to the screen like, I'm not, I, you know, I don't want to be a victim. Everybody wasn't as lucky as Billy D. Williams. People need to point that out. Billy D, some people were not as lucky as you to become a sex symbol. There was some just regular dark-skinned black people who got treated like shit or didn't have an opportunity to express their gifts in this world because of the color of their skin by a system that was determined to make it that way. You could say, you're not going to let that hold you down. A lot of people were held down. It had to play, in order to even be on the screen, had to play degraded roles. So I totally disagree with him. At the end of the day, sit your ass down, Billy D. Don't stop talking for people. Stop talking. Talk for you. Say, preface everything you say and say, hey, I, Billy D. Williams, feel this way about me personally. For the rest of society, including Tim Black's kids and grandkids, I don't want this for them. But for me, I'm fine. I'm fine with people playing blackface. I'm fine with people mocking black people to their face, to the world. Boosting stereotypes, negative stereotypes that make black people un inhumane, inhuman, unhuman, animalistic. Animalistic. We are animals. That's what they were saying. And you co sign that. You say that's okay because it's art. Now, nah, it's not art to dehumanize a group of people based on color. That's not art. And fuck you for, for submitting that. To the world, and also in all the uh, in all the uh, horrible bigots in the comment section alone, for me having to look and see all the harming, all the harmful bigots in the comment section of the Bill Maher video, going, yeah, he's got a point. Look at him. I love the way his attitude about it. It's just great. He doesn't have a problem. Those are the same people that supported Candace Owens all this time. Same people, the exact same people. Oh, thank God, we guys, yeah, yeah. Why can't other blacks be like Billy D and not care what we say? Why, why we gotta stop saying niggas and stop, you know, why we gotta stop being racist? We should be able to keep on. Billy D's got such a healthy attitude. Live and let live. So what if they only own 2% of the wealth in the country they build for free against their will? So what? So what? They can't get business loans, even when they had the same credit scores. Oh, so what? They pay more on interest rates, even when they have the same ratings. So what? So what? So what? So what? Why are you complaining about it? Stop being a victim. Not to be outdone, because it's a great day, man. I'm giving out two awards, two sit your ass down awards. My second sit your ass down award goes to Gerard Carmichael. It's amazing I'm able to get this award out so quickly because he was just recently dumping all over Dave Chappelle. Saying Dave Chappelle should not be making trans jokes. And Dave Chappelle, his whole legacy, his legacy is going to be making trans jokes. You know what I realized? Gerard Carmichael has made a lot of slave jokes. Yeah. 
Here goes a portion of one of his slave jokes. I hope I'm okay. I, you know, I don't. Well, I should be fine to play this because I'm playing a clip that's played by another YouTube channel. Comedy Hype played this clip. So instead of taking a chance with HBO, I'm playing a clip from a clip that was played on YouTube. So here goes Ger Gerard Carmichael, the recipient of my other Situations Down Award. So Gerard joked. I sometimes joke that like our relationship is like a slave and the master son who like teaches me how to read by candlelight. Yeah, he groans too. He doesn't like that joke. I like that joke. That's my burden. I think that shit's hilarious. The reaction online seems sex in connection. During the latest episode, Gerard joked. I sometimes joke that like our relationship is like a slave and the master son who like teaches me how to read by candlelight. Yeah, he groans too. He doesn't like that joke. I like that joke. That's my burden. I think that shit's hilarious. Yeah, he thinks that he makes, it's funny to me sometimes, man, where the people that tell you don't make jokes about LGBTQIA have no problem making black jokes. No problem making slave jokes, that's fine. There were people from the LGBTQIA community saying, hey man, this makes us look really bad. You're really dogging us out by you being a member. You just came out as gay last year and you were already you been making jokes about slave with your white partner, your sex play jokes, and you play the runaway slave with your, and then you tell people and you think that's funny. I don't know. And it wouldn't be as bad if he wasn't just policing someone making jokes about trans people but he can make jokes about black people and about slavery, like the most touchy thing, the most, it's our Holocaust. And he gets to make jokes about that. There would be, once again, guys, it'd be different if he hadn't already, if he hadn't spoken up about Dave Chappelle, said, Dave Chappelle, your legacy is shit, and this is, you're doing this is wrong, and you're an egomaniac because you think you should be able to make these jokes. And then we find out he's a making jokes like that himself, but it's been about black people, but He's fine with that. And I find out it's not just his HBO, new HBO thing where he's doing this. Let me see if I can find the other one. Just, I mean, I got receipts, so why not show them, you know? Um, I got another receipt on here. Yeah, here we go. This flip light onto the ground, and they hand him on business. <laughs> And, and out of nowhere, these four police officers came out of nowhere and they pulled guns on me and they forced me down onto the ground and they handcuffed me. And I remember getting a scratch on my face from my face hitting the sidewalk and then they stood me up and they flashed this floodlight in my eyes. And it was all because I fit a description. And that happens every single day here. And I would rather go through that every single day in America than get my master's degree in North Korea. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? Like, I'm starting to appreciate slavery <laughs> for the blessing in disguise that it was. And I know that sounds cold. You know, it's like, how could a man say he appreciates slavery? But you guys got to understand, if it weren't for slavery, you guys, I would be in Africa right now. <laughs> Africa. <laughs> Yeah, that's your brother, Gerard Carmichael. That's from a few years ago. And what I'm saying is this, man. Gerard Carmichael's been complaining about Dave Chappelle making trans jokes. Not because he really has a problem with it. Because it's a play. It's a play, I feel. It's a play in order to get publicity and get his name out there more. It's a play for him to get more media attention. And who better to go after? Go after Dave Chappelle. You go after probably one of the hottest, not the hottest comedian of the last 10 years, you go after one of the hottest comedians. Best way to do it. And all of a sudden he comes out too. Like he comes out, he wasn't out, he comes out. 
And then he goes directly at Dave Chappelle for making trans jokes. And it turns out you've been making all types of black jokes and African jokes and slave jokes. So you're not like foreign to the idea that going to talking about taboo topics is a right that a comedian has. Get what I'm saying? He's not averse to the, he don't have a problem with you talking about taboo subjects. So that means he really, see what I'm saying? He don't have a real problem with it. What it is, he was an opportunist. Gerard Carmichael is a piece of garbage because he's an opportunist just looking to get ahead and he's using Dave Chappelle's name to do so. That's all this is. And I'm not saying it's wrong for him to, it's not, look, I'm not even pissed off. I'm not going to KK Karen him. I'm not going to be a Darren, okay? I don't know if we got a black man current thing. I'm going to call it a Darren. I'm not going to be a Darren about this. You want to make your jokes, make your jokes, bro? You are a B.I. You a biatch. We're calling out Dave Chappelle for doing similar stuff. And it was all, now we see it was all about opportunity. Opportunity. It's the, it, forget the fact that your comedy is not my type of comedy. I don't find you funny. But I realize I may not be your target audience. You know what I'm saying? I get that. And you know, I don't have to like everybody. I prefer Shane Gillis and uh, Richard Pry and, you know, Bill Burr and Kevin Hart. or I mean, even Kevin Hart's funny in this guy. But, um, you know, um, Cat Williams or Bernie Mac. I mean, so many other comedians I would put ahead. Corey Holcomb that I would put ahead of Eddie Griffin. I would put ahead of Gerard Carmichael. It's like crazy. DC Carey. Like so many folks. Godfrey. I mean, so many people. I mean, Ari Spears. It's funnier than Gerard Carmichael. But you ended up with the show and you got another show. But once again, guys, this is Gerard Carmichael gets the sit down. He gets to sit your ass down a war because he's full of shit. That's all this is. If, if you're saying these guys can't make jokes on taboo topics, then you can't make jokes on taboo to topics. You don't get to make jokes about us and then say, but they can't make jokes about them or us. Like, because you're them or us. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't say don't make trans jokes and then you make black jokes. And, you know, and slave jokes. Ugh. Ew. Ew. And then make, like, Africa's a horrible place jokes. This guy said, thank God for slavery. Talk about hacky. Like, I wonder how many black guys do predominantly perform predominantly in front of predominantly white audiences, make jokes like that. Probably all of them. Some of you guys watching don't know I did a little stand-up comedy. I did some stand-up comedy in white rooms because I was with a white guy on his tour. His name is Lee Camp. And I didn't make jokes about slaves to the all-white audience trying to get an easy white jokes about how African, you know, like, I did do one police joke, but I was in Portland, so I was like, I was calling my homeboy, I was calling my homie, because in Portland, everybody wanted to give me weed. And I was like, man, y'all can't give me this weed. I, I got to leave here. I got to go back to the airport. Y'all don't get me locked up. I can't call my boy and be like, yo, man, I need you to come get me. He'll be like, where you at? I'm like, I'm in Portland. I'm in Portland? The hell you doing in Portland? Don't no brothers go to Portland? But that's about as far as I went with that. I wasn't like... Hey, yeah, and if black people, we got a problem because we from Africa. Have you been to Africa? We got a bunch of African booty scratchers. We don't have no shoes. And I'm like, I only did it for like a year, and I didn't do this type of shit. And this is a professional comedian. So all I'm saying is that he's a, look, he, I'm not a Durant. He's entitled to make his bad jokes or his good jokes. Fine. My thing is, that guy should not complain when somebody else makes jokes about trans people. That's all I'm saying. 
If we're going to make jokes, if you're going to be a person complaining about those types of jokes, you can't be a person that makes those types of jokes about other people. That's all I'm saying. That's all. All right, guys. Let's keep it moving. I know what I'm saying. That makes sense. Let's see if I let me see if anybody anybody has a yeah Jay. I did some stand up, fam. Yeah, fam. I did some stand up. Look, brother, brother, like I was offered. Someone's like, yo, Tim, man, come on, come on the tour with me, man. You know what I'm saying? Come on tour. So I was like, all right, you know. And I learned, I learned that comedians build their sets like. I did like 10 cities, like I did like 10 appearances and I built a routine and every time I, I would work on it and work on it and work on it and work on it. It was, it was dope. Um, even the white crowd is down with the FTP hogs or hogs. Yeah, but you heard, you heard my joke, right? It was more like black people don't want to be around the cops. I forget exactly how it went, but it was like, you will get me arrested. And then it, it was, it was great. But yeah, yeah, I know a lot of white people ain't down with cops. I appreciate that. <laughs> what Buck say? I missed your comment, Buck. <laughs> Red Fox, that Red Fox. Yeah. Lynn got it. Lynn said it makes total sense. That's all I'm saying. <clears throat> If you're somebody who doesn't want to hear taboo type jokes, I get that. But then you don't want to be one of those people that then does taboo do jokes. It's about other people. Because that, that makes you a hypocrite. That's all. Okay. <laughs> and, and the next thing, the, now the next topic, let me do this one because um, something happened recently. We'll switch gears all the way up, man. This is this is a tough topic, but I want to cover it because it's what we do. We cover tough topics. There was a young man who was shot in Chicago by the police. His name is Dexter Reed. He was shot by the police. He was 26 years old. He was shot and killed with a tactical unit of police officers Fired 96 bullets at him within 41 seconds. They fired 96 bullets at one person in 41 seconds. One officer shot 50 times. One officer pulled the trigger 50 times or shot 50 rounds. Three of the last rounds and after they said, okay, stop. Dexter Reed was on the ground, not, bro not moving, not breathing, not moving. And he shot three more times after that. He goes a little bit more about the, about the situation. Oh, Lord, Jesus, please help me. And his entire family, what played out on newly released body camera video is nothing but pain. They shot him down like an animal. Why did they shoot him that many times? He's already dead. Why you study shooting him like that? They killed my son and they killed me too. March 21st, 2024, Chicago police are initiating a traffic stop on a driver reportedly for not wearing a seatbelt, according to the Civilian Office of Police Accountability, a traffic stop being conducted by five tactical officers. Roll the window down. What are you doing? Roll this one down. Roll that one down, too. Huh? Hey, don't roll the window up. I'm don't roll down. the window up. Hey, okay. Do not roll the window up. Hey, do not Unlock the doors now! The temperature quickly escalates. One officer puts what appears to be his gun on the windshield. 
Reed then fires first, hitting an officer in the forearm, according to the initial investigation. Then, chaos. Reed goes down. Then, three final gunshots. 96 in total, according to investigators. A gun was later recovered from the front seat of Reed's car. Portia Banks had just been on the phone with her brother in the minutes before it all happened. Then she turned on a police scanner at her shop. Listening to the police talking, like saying shots fired, but I can hear all the shots on the scanner. Like I can hear so many shots, so many shots, so many shots. <clears throat> what I'm trying to say, guys, is this this is not that's not police work. That's what you call execution. Yeah, this is that's not police work, that's execution. First of all, I don't buy the story at all. I don't buy it at all. I don't I don't see how this is a story at all, guys. You know, I, I believe I don't believe anybody should buy this story. Do you really think five tactical unarmed? I mean Plain clothes cops do a traffic stop of a guy with tinted windows because they say he didn't wear a seatbelt. Anybody, are we buying this? That make any sense to y'all? First of all, how do you see in the vehicle to see that he has on no seatbelt or he doesn't have a seatbelt on? How do you see that through the tinted windows? And what does a tactical unit doing pulling somebody over for tinted windows or for that would make more sense if they pulled him over for tinted windows that would make more sense but wouldn't a regular uniformed officer do that why is a tactical unit like when i think tactical i think the guys that go hit the the the, the, the drug spot or go get the you know or you know like they they're there for a specific mission tactical right am i tripping or am i making sense guys a tactical unit of five un, five officers, plain clothes, in unmarked vehicles, pull a guy over for not wearing a seatbelt. He can't tell no tales because he's dead. See, this is the way I look at it, and and and, and you know, I'm maybe I'm maybe I'm just a little whack, right? Maybe I got some problems because I look at it like this. I think there was more to this. I believe there was more to this story, and they had to make sure this guy was dead, obviously. Because the last thing they wanted him to do is survive and then tell this side of the story. There is something more. Maybe this was a hit. I did not put this past the Chicago Police Department. I did not put it past any police department. Because to me, the police ain't nothing but a gang. I did not put it past the police to do a hit for whatever reason. And he knew that was coming. He knew I believe that Dexter Reed, now, guys, write this, I don't expect you to write it down. But I'm just saying, just remember this, guys. I'm, you hear it first here. I have not watched coverage of this. All I did was watch the footage and print out an article, read the article, compare my notes, do a little bit more research. I believe that the Chicago Police Department was carrying out a hit on this man. He knew somebody was, he knew the cops were after him. And that's why he didn't want to get out the car to begin with. I don't believe you shoot at someone 96 times unless you're trying to kill them. And I believe those many officers shot at him like that for a reason. And it wasn't due to no damn failure to wear a seatbelt. I just don't believe it. I don't believe it. I just can't go for it. I was born at night, born at night but not last night. I can't accept that. And this sounds a whole lot like the Laquan McDonald case. Remember Laquan McDonald? How many people were around for Laquan McDonald? Put a one up if you remember the story of Laquan McDonald. This is, I'm taking you all the way back to 2014. 10 years ago, 
on this very channel, I covered Laquan McDonald. I've been covering these issues for a long time. I wasn't giving you marriage advice in 2014. I wasn't talking about how you could get a girl and how to be a pickup artist. This is the type of work I was doing. No diss. Just thought I'd throw that out there because people say, Tim, you need to brag sometime about your work because people don't know. They think you just popped up and started talking about Bernie. That's all they think. No, I was covering this type of shit. I just thought Bernie was a would have been better for black people than Biden. Maybe I was wrong, but I think it still would have been better. Here's the point. Laquan McDonald was a 17-year-old black kid who was unarmed except for a pocket knife, and they shot him 16 times. One officer shot him 16 times. 10 times while he was on the ground. Then the officers covered it up. 10 officers lied on reports, threw away witness statements. All this happened in Chicago, not too far from this. It's the same city. <clears throat> All those officers, except for the shooter, were acquitted. They were all hiding information, hiding evidence, lying on reports. Not just not just the officers on duty, officers, supervisors, shift com commands, all of it. They stepped on that case. See, I don't. <clears throat> excuse me. I do not believe <clears throat> that just because you get a badge that means that you're a good person, or that you're willing to go against your system. Because it's not just about being an individual good person. It's also about the politics of being a cop. After what I saw them do, after what we saw them do to Tyree Nichols, after what we saw them doing out, out there in Mississippi with the Goon Squad, there's a number of cases. People got to stop burying their head in the sand. There's a lot of people, and I know not everybody that comments on the YouTube comment section is an actual person. I know some of these people are bots. Part of the division that we have in this country is because people are fanning it with fake comment sections. But I don't think everybody's a fake. But if you people gotta stop putting their head in the sand and just going, but he should have just complied. Now this doesn't. This young man, Dexter Reed, is not killed if they don't pull him over for a seatbelt. He was pulled over for a seatbelt. Why you gotta get out the car for a seatbelt? I know I got some people that probably don't get it. It reminds me of Laquan McDonald all day, and it's the same police department. David remembers. Thank you, Damon. James remembers. Black woman stand up remembers. Or Lee remembers. Old Dirty remembers. Old Dirty Kung Fu. Katrina got me. Thank you, Katrina. Carolyn gets it. Troy Davis. There it is, Troy Davis. Damn. Not a bot. The car had tinted windows, too. Exactly. New Orleans and their torture warehouses. Goon Squad esque shit. But way deeper cover up via the fence. Thank you, James. <clears throat> That's another thing about Dr. Malina Abdullah. She's calling those cops out. Got to respect it. Got to respect it. D gets it. Well, they passed seatbelt laws in my state the same year they did away with motorcycle helmet laws. Seatbelts were an excuse to pull you over. There it is. There it is. There it is. But a tactical unit, Buck, a SWAT unit, a tactical unit is wasting this time with people with seatbelts? Really? A tactical unit? Tactical unit is supposed to be like SWAT. They're supposed to run up in buildings. They're supposed to be casing and foiling big drug deals or arms deals, not pulling people over for seatbelts. I can see if he just kidnapped somebody. 
They just saw a crime go down. They're obligated to respond. But a seatbelt? Come on now. I, I, come on. Now, I know I got, I don't know if I got any law enforcement personnel that watch this show, but come on now. Come on. It smells like a fish market up in here. That's how fishy it is. Next story. One of the most popular shows going on right now. One of the most talked about. One is climbing up the charts. They're pulling in all types of guests that are getting them huge numbers. It's the show or the channel, Valuetainment, that's run by Pat Ben David. How do people know about Valuetainment? And they've had Shaq on the show. They've had Kobe Bryant, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. They've had Tucker Carlson came on. They, I think he, I think he did. Nah, I think they went on Tucker. I think Pat Ben David's been on Tucker. Um, Jesse Waters from Fox just went on. Of course, Kent Kundis Owens has been on. Uh, a lot of big names have been on this show. Okay, Pat Ben David, Value Tamer is the name of the show. So they talk about a lot of controversial stuff. I just saw this and I had to say, I got to include this because this is what conservative media gets away with doing. And I'm sure there's a lot of, you know, other types of media that gets away with a lot of other stuff. But today, I'm looking at this show. I watched this clip. It's about January 6th. They're talking about January 6th. And it's a whole bunch of stuff because this channel is a big time Trump supporting channel. And, you know, they talk about stuff, the indictments and the charges and all these things. They start talking about January 6th. I said, look at this clip. I want to share this clip with you. And then we can talk about it. It's Democrats on J6 saying little evidence of true insurrection. Okay. Independent presidential candidate Robert Kennedy. In issued a statement criticizing the prosecution of J6 protests that acknowledging wrongdoing, but questioning the portrayal of the event as an insurrection, stating reasonable people tell me there's little evidence of a true insurrection. Kennedy expressed concerns about the possibility of political motives behind the prosecution of J6 defendants, highlighting a broader pattern of government agencies being used against political opponents, asserting without the impartial rule of law, there is no true democracy or moral governance. He proposed appointing a special counsel to investigate potential abuse of prosecutorial, uh, 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 prosecutorial discretion in the January 6th case. So you know what this means? So in one instance, you have something where a group of people are screaming, death to America, mm -hmm. nothing happens to them. In another instance, a thousand people get arrested Great. for not being happy with what takes place. The government gets to pick and choose who to demonize and who to edify and who to idolize. In this instance, they chose to demonize a thousand Americans that were simply not happy with what the government was doing. They intentionally figured out a way to demonize these guys and arrest these guys. Tom, what are your thoughts on this with RFK? Well, have to remember, the, why did they call it an insurrection? Why was that word so important uh, for, to the Democrats to label it an insurrection? Because that was the word that was in the Constitution that gave them the right to take action. Correct. Yeah, you know, you know, this is the thing about January 6th. And, and it's not going away anytime soon. It's going to be a major part of the election cycle. And I know there's people that are tired of hearing about January 6th. Frankly, I'm tired of hearing about it too. For real, I'm going to keep it real with you. But listen, Donald Trump is the nominee from the Republican Party. Biden is running. It's going to come up. The Democrats are going to be using this the entire time all the way through to November. So just get used to it. Here's the thing, guys. I agree that they use the term insurrection for a political purpose. To, to hurt Trump with that. Okay, I know, I agree with that. But I just, maybe I'm not watching something that some of you are watching or some of these guys are watching. I just don't buy that a pro-Palestinian march where people are chanting, he said, death to America. He's talking about 
a, ra a rally that was held in Michigan, Dearborn, Michigan, a, a bunch of uh, protesters who were upset with Joe Biden funding Israel, basically the Gaza War. That's what they're upset about. And they're saying death to America for funding a genocide in Gaza. They're comparing that to January 6th. And this is something that Pat David does all the time. And I understand why people, why do people accept this as being like a coherent, like, argument? How is this, how is this a reasonable argument? How, is this, how does this argument make sense? How do these two things come together? Why do they get to keep doing this? They get to keep comparing things that had nothing to do with each other. Pat Pat Davis comparing him and this whole panel of about four or five guys are going to be comparing a pro-Palestinian anti-genocide rally to January 6th. Now, I know that's awesome footage. When people were walking through the walking through the Capitol very nonchalant. Like they was just chilling. And they was at Drew Park up in Baltimore. Like they was up at the Anacostia Park. And they was up at Haynes Point in DC. You know, I know there were some people in January 6th in the Capitol that was just cooling out, smoking weed on Nancy's desk, you know, chilling out. With the lectern, like ain't nothing going on. They have a, I'm surprised they weren't up in there barbecuing. But there was also some people that was hitting police in the head with flags and shit. I saw that with my own eyes. It was like this. People were spraying cops with bear mace, with deer mace. Now I know there was some, I know there's some clips the show things were nice, and I saw clips where things were rowdy. But at the Palestinian marches in Dearborn, Michigan, I didn't see no shit like that. I didn't see nobody spraying no damn cops. See, they leave those parts out in their arguments. Yeah, they said things like death to the United States for funding the genocide or whatever. But they weren't spraying cops with mace and hitting them with flagpoles in the head peeing on people's desks and smearing feces on the walls of the Capitol. Like, that really happened. I'm not saying, so I'm also not saying the term insurrection is the perfect term. I don't feel it's the perfect term for what happened. I think trespassing, violation of something, breaking and entering for some of these people, but I, don't, I never was cool with the term insurrection, because I don't think they were really trying to overturn the election. That's, that's how I see it. I don't feel that they were trying to, by force, take over the country. When I see what happens in other countries, when they do that shit, when they do coups, for instance, if you look up the term coup, you look at the, I did this, do some research, look up the term coup. Say, listen to coups in the last 60 years. The rest of the world does not include the United States. Because what happened here on January 6th is that considered a coup. To nobody else on the planet, except the Democrats. <laughs> I'm just saying, I did my research on this. I was like, let me look and see what the rest of the world thinks. Oop, nope, not there. Hell, we don't, even on our own websites, we don't consider it a coup. But the Democratic Party labeled it a coup because they want to stop Trump. I get it. I get it. I wish some of the liberals get it. I wish some of the center, whatever these people are, get it. I wish they would get it. Because it's kind of obvious. Nobody else considers a coup, a coup except for Biden supporters. It's the only place that's considered a coup. I've seen coups. Those coups, a lot more people get shot than just a white lady who tried to break into the office or something. A lot more people, a lot more shit goes down. Have you seen video of Haiti? Okay. Anyway, point is this. So, they get like, they have a smidgen of truth and a whole heap of lies and exaggerations and bullshit. And it works. They end up getting the best guest with the biggest draw to bring the most attention. They get probably 10 million views, <clears throat> excuse me, 20 million views a month. 
And it just works for them. And I'm sitting over here and I'm watching this. I'm like, look at them. these guys are killing it. They are killing it. But it's such, it's such a deceitful scam artist bullshit grifting. It's scammy. It's, it's slimy. It's grifting, scamming, lying, misleading, and very effective and lucrative. But it's also bullshit. That's what it is, guys. It is what it is. So RFK is saying, hey, January 6th was not an insurrection. And um, he wants to claim, he says that if he, you know, if he's elected, he wants to, he's going to do something about it or whatever. I don't know. I don't know exactly. I didn't go into all of what, J- what RFK said he's going to do about it. I just look at RFK making a play for Trump supporters. That's what it looks like. It's like RFK is trying to attract Trump supporters, so he's saying what he'll do about January 6th. And, I, and I, you know, that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to pull some Trump support, and that's one way to do it. Anybody got any thoughts about that? What do you think, guys? No, I'm not. <clears throat> no, I'm not a Democrat or a Biden supporter, but that was a coup. They did not want to. They did want to stop Biden from taking office. Okay. She said she think it was a coup. It's a failed country. Of blacks are. The reality is, U.S. is a failed country. The blacks are in mortal danger. Once it goes down, cops and their allies. Well, do the blacks like they did to that guy in the car they pulled, the car they pulled over? My prediction. Jesus Christ, facts not feelings. Facts not feelings, y'all. Christina, yep, these clan thugs lynch each other too. It's a campaign coup. It's an old American trope. It's a campaign coup. <laughs> Oh, RFK looked like a recovering alcohol. <laughs> he was worse than that. You, D, he was worse than that, brother. He's a, he's a, he's a way worse than that. He had a lot more, a lot more uh, addictions than just alcoholic. If I, if I remember his story correctly, he was, he was on something pretty heavy for like ten years. But uh, I think he's been sober for twenty years. That's what he says. Tough stuff, man. Tough stuff. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming through, man. That's really all I got tonight. Uh, we'll be back Friday. We'll be back Friday with another show, guys. And uh, we're going to do it every third, every Wednesday and every Friday. The Tim Black Show is back. We're calling it out with Tim Black Show. It's the new iteration of the Tim Black Show. And this is what we do. And uh, tomorrow's going to be a special broadcast. Because uh, I got an interview, an interview tomorrow with Dr. Cornell West. Hopefully, Dr. Abdullah will also be here. I want us to get to know her, get to know the vice presidential pick for the Independent Party, the Justice for All Party. I'm looking forward to that. And we can have those conversations, and we can get into it. And I'm excited about it, guys. I'm very excited about what this can mean for our country, what this can mean for our politics. So I hope that you join me tomorrow. Um, hit like on this before you leave. Go to jointinblack.com, become a member of us on Patreon. I will be updating to let people know when the show will be tomorrow when I'll be interviewing Dr. West. But uh, you know, just stay in contact with me and I'm gonna post it. But we gotta go quick. Like he announced it today, and tomorrow he's coming through. So that, you know, we wanna keep it moving, keep the keep the fire burning, you know what I'm saying? I'm excited about it. I hope you join us. Once again, I'm Tim Black. Go to join Tim Black to become a member of the Tim Black Show. Become a VIP. Remember, like I always say, don't let nobody take your cornbread. Don't let nobody take your cornbread, Johnson. Looking forward to seeing tomorrow's interviews. You got it, fam. All right, folks.
But that's it. I got number love for you. I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to hit me up if you want to email me. Email me at Tim at TimBlackTV.com. <clears throat> Tim at TimBlackTV.com is how you get in contact with me. I'm on all your social media. I'm either Real Tim Black or Tim Black Show. Real Tim Black or Tim Black Show. Thank you for tuning in. I love y'all. I'll see you soon. And remember, it's a new day.